in this module we shall cover the design and other essential understanding of omnet plus plus and the model structure for a good simulator to be realized there are some design features of omnet plus plus which makes it widely popular these design features actually come from the requirements for example there may be a requirement for large scale simulation in terms of either the number of objects or the topology size or the run of the simulation it is also required that with this large simulation environment debugging time should be considerably reduced otherwise it is going to take a very long time it is also a requirement that the input and output should be processed using widely available software tools and finally the model development and analysis has to be unified under a single umbrella in order to realize the functional implementation of these requirements omnet plus plus implements hierarchical simulation model that means that there is a hierarchy between the types and constituents of the simulation models omnet plus plus emphasizes the reusability by identifying a component based structure the omnet plus plus ide provides visualization both to the user as well as to the debugger to look inside what is happening real time it also emphasizes and implements the open data interfaces so that widely available tools can be conveniently utilized this all is realized through a robust and all encompassing ide the model structure in omnet plus plus is based on the concept of modules what are modules modules are independent programs which implement certain functionality of networking components data types communication channels and error and these modules are implemented through connections between them these connections allow message passing to be realized between these modules these modules are programmed in c++ usually implementing the simulation class library and these are executed in the simulation kernel as we have already discussed the module types can be classified as simple modules which are the basic active modules you can relate them to the atomic programs which cannot be further divided and the compound modules compound modules can be thought of as non atomic modules which can be further subdivided into atomic or simple modules the simple modules can be grouped together into compound modules and so forth this is a two way process either we can build a compound module using widely available simple modules to implement our own functionality or we can split already available compound module into its constituent simple modules and use these simple modules at the granular level since these modules communicate through connections these connections are implemented as gates gates provide input and output pathways to each module these modules can communicate through gates to other modules either directly or through intermediaries this particular figure shows you an outward to inward representation of how we look at definition of a simulation environment here we can see we have a network that comprises both simple and compound modules these modules are connected to each other via gates and these gates are connected to each other through connections the beauty of omnet++ also lies in the fact that it puts no limit 
on the complexity that we want to give to our simulation program. That is, there is as such no constraint on the number of components that we can define or the variants or the types of these components. So the overall flexibility of Omnet++ becomes boundless. Now, let's look at the concept of gates in a little more detail. These gates serve as input-output interfaces for simple and compound modules. They allow message passing and they are connected through connections. As you can see, these connections can be defined on the basis of different channel features. Here it is shown that for a certain connection, we can define the propagation delay, the data rate, and the bit error rate. You can see in the figure that I've included three steps. These three steps summarize the overall development of the simulation process. The first thing that we do is we define the module types. We instantiate them depending upon the features and their properties we want to utilize. And finally, the network which embodies simple and compound modules starts to function as the simulation. Another concept which is very closely related to gates is the channel. When we define specific properties of a connection, that becomes a channel. So the beauty of Omnet++ is that it allows us to give reusability feature in simulation at several places. For example, if we define a channel as Ethernet cable, for example, 100 base T or 10 base T, UTP category 5 cable, it will have its own bit error rate, data rate, and the transmission and the propagation delay. Another important concept is the message. Message is what is transmitted from one gate to the other. It could be, to begin with, as simple as a timestamp, arbitrary data, or it could be more complex data structure like an IP packet. So, when we look at this whole simulation, it is actually a network of modules and submodules with no external gates. It has to be self-sustaining. Each module has to have some parameters. These parameters actually pass the configuration data for a certain module to behave. This results in the definition of the overall network topology that you want to use. The parameters could have any of the following values. It could be a string, numeric or Boolean data type. It could even take constants or random numbers. Or it could take expressions which serve only as reference. The module parameters in Omnet++ IDE can be passed either in editor window or through GUI.